and we're back and let's get into question three. So I'm lost. Help me navigate my deformation mechanism maps. So I have some undergraduate researchers once again working on three uh, new metal alloys shown in uh, A, B, and C below. Um, so first we need to correct any mistakes in labeling deformation mechanism maps. So we know that this should always be, this should be TS, TS, TS. This should be DG. This should always be DG. This should be DG. Good. We know that this is elastic. This should be elastic here. This has to be elastic here. And we also know that this is going to be, no, uh, let's look at here. Bar herring, uh, this could be cobalt. Uh, I don't think so. It's going to be PLC or DLC. Um, here, nope, DLC. Cobalt to borrow, good. Um, nope, we need to flip these. So this needs to be DLC or PLC. Uh, DLC, DLC. And this needs to be cobalt. This one had a lot of mistakes. This needs to be NH. There we go. We also know, looking at this graph, that sigma y of b is greater than sigma y of c, and that is also greater than sigma y of a. So those are our ranking in terms of our yield stress. So something's going on here. So I don't know if you haven't read the problem. Rank the yield stress. Oh, what do you know? <laughs> uh, rate the grain size of the three materials in order of increasing grain size. So if we know this, if it was grain size mechanism, so we know that um, that sigma, that our delta sigma y is proportional to dg minus 1. So the material with the highest yield strain uh, would have the lowest. So my dg of uh, b, for example, just a little bit, dg of b is less than dg of c and is less than the dg of a. My grain size of a is the largest. All right. What creep mechanism will dominate at higher temperatures, Nabarro herring or cc? Um, so we know that that's going to be Navarro herring. Why? Because we all know Navarro herring, we're looking at bulk diffusion. So at high temperatures, we know that our Q of our lattice is greater than Q of our GB. So we need high temperatures to kind of diffuse in the bulk. We're moving fast, essentially, along these grain boundaries here, diffusive pathways. But again, it's a small percentage of your material. If the material is cold worked versus annealed, what mechanism will dominate? So if we're cold worked, we know that our grain size shrinks. So if you have a smaller grain size, we have more diffusive pathways. So we know that um, for cobalt creep, we scale as dg to the minus three. So smaller grain size, that means if it's cold work, cobalt creep, anneal, nebron herring. Um, and then you can again talk about those diffusive pathways. So when we're grain size, when we're cobalt creep, we're moving along here. So if my grain size is smaller, we're moving along these grain boundaries, there's more pathways and it will contribute more than the bulk at lower temperatures. Because again, you could, you know, you, you, we've talked about this uh, several times, quite a bit in class. So uh, expand upon that answer. All right, what alloy could um, have the largest concentration of solute? Uh, what alloy can be annealed for the highest or longest temperatures, highest times? So we know again. So if if we we're uh, solute strengthening, we would know the highest yield strength. So we know that for solute strengthening, that our change in yield stress is proportional to C solute half. So B would have the largest concentration of solute. If we were annealing, we would know, again, the lowest yield strength, i.e., you know, uh, A, that is going to be annealed for the longest times, highest temperatures. And then let's look. And then what alloy might have precipitates with a critical particle radius? So we know that, again, in our diagram, sigma y is a function of radius. Again, it goes up here and then down. This is our critical radii. So the highest yield strength is going to be the material with the critical radii. So that would be, in this problem, B. That's it. So again, you want to expand on these answers. We've kind of gone through these, you know, fairly quickly because we've discussed at length in, you know, videos and problem sets and in-class activities. But expand upon these answers. Draw graphs. Do kind of what I've, you know, kind of said. Uh, draw pictures and explain those thoroughly uh, to get your full points. That's great. So next time we'll be on to the last problem, which is my blood pressure is rising cyclically, so I'm so fatigued. See you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.